thing, look, that looking at other payment types than credit cards is going to get even more important during the, the Trump and coming year. I know credit debit cards are very, are very important in the US. Um, there's two two things to there, right? The first thing is reaching debit cards through debit networks. So I know it hasn't been, uh, you know, hasn't been able, you haven't been able to do it in the US and it's been incredibly difficult. But that, you know, with the changings of the laws out here and the ability to do pinless debit, um, through online, uh, you need to have a platform that's able to help you with that. So being able to route debit, ca debit cards to debit networks and, and fall back on other things, it's going to save a huge amount of money on your interchange, your cost savings, etc. cetera. Um, and that's something that's been used in other parts of the world very successfully and, and should be used more here. I think what we're seeing is also the adoption of other payment types for a particular consumer basis. So, um, you know, wallets aren't that huge in the US. I think you've got, you know, Apple Pay, Google Pay, PayPal are kind of the, the three in the US, but we're seeing that growing. That's growing like 25% year on year of new additional wallets coming into the market. Um, they are create, gaining market share, being able to support that and frankly support your customers. So look, there's some scary, scary stats around Gen, Gen Z, right? The, you know, they, they spend more online shopping than they do on entertainment and, and going out with their friends, which very different from my generation. Uh, and then, and then moving, moving on from, from there, like 60% of Gen Z don't have bank accounts, right? That's, that's huge. That's more, you know, obviously it's more than half, but it's a, a massive amount that they just don't have a bank account, which means they don't have a card, but yet 50% of Gen Z globally have at least one payment app. So whether that's a Venmo in the U S or something else in different parts of the world. So just paying attention to that and opening up the payment options that you're offering will allow you to grow and accept new customers coming on board. I think other lessons that we're seeing internationally is the rise of the real-time payments. So open banking, as we call it, Euro, it's called something different in Australia. But the benefits of that to the merchant to be able to drive down costs are pretty pretty massive. Obviously, no chargebacks, a variety of different advantages for a merchant. And the barrier has always been uh, the, the user experience, frankly, that, you know, is this going to be much harder than clicking on a on an Apple Pay button? Is this going to be harder than typing in a credit card number, etc.? Et and what you're starting to see, I mean, like in, in India, we, you've seen the credit card pretty much be wiped out, right? And everyone is using UPI to pay for things, or Tears or one of the other wallets. Um, we're starting to see that slowly taking up or being picked up in Europe. User experience is great. Actually, it's, I mean, it's very simple for you to make an open banking payment for an item. Um, in a, and the, where we see huge success is when merchants incentivize the consumer to pay in this new way. So rather than just hoping everybody will use open banking, we've seen accepting rates go up like tenfold the minute you start offering an incentive. And that incentive could be cash back, the incentive could be loyalty points, vouchers, um, money off. All of those things uh, allow you to preference that type of payment option to the consumer, give them a benefit for using it. And then we see consumers are willing to step away from what they've got to the new payment types. They're less less attractive. They care less about the loyalty and they care, especially if the loyalty that you're providing is higher than what they would get, perhaps some loyalty points from their credit card company. Thank you.